Thank you, Dr. Lillian Erdahl, for talking to OnSurge today about some benign breast conditions. Tell me about abscesses. Who gets abscesses, breast abscesses? Yeah, so there are two main categories of breast abscess. Um, one is lactational, so associated with breastfeeding. And then the other is a non-lactational abscess. So if we start with lactation, some of the risk factors for getting uh, mastitis or infection of the breast and then potentially leading to abscess includes a woman who has difficulty with latch, maybe has some nipple skin breakdown, um, as well as milk stasis. So women who for some reason are going longer than expected emptying the breast or have some sort of obstructive process like a milk plug. Um, and, you know, we don't see those women very often in breast surgery unless they present with a more severe infection or abscess. So, so who do those people present to typically? To their typically, to, yeah, lactation consultant or an OBGYN. Um, and usually breast surgeons don't see the patients until the infection has sort of gotten out of hand or hasn't responded to conventional interventions. I see. And, and what typically are those uh, interventions or conventional treatments that happen before you see them? Yeah, so, uh, you know, a big part of treatment of mastitis is emptying the breast. So working with a lactation consultant to figure out why is the milk not being emptied well from the breast, sometimes heat packs, changing latch, you know, pumping and massage, sort of, um, uh, you know, compression in addition to um, just standard nursing or pumping. And again, that should be done with the supervision of an experienced lactation consultant. So, you know, compressing or just squeezing the breast might not actually help with um, uh, milk emptying. So it's really targeted specific techniques of compression. And then certainly antibiotics. So often a woman with mastitis has symptoms that are nonspecific, some systemic symptoms like fever, chills, feeling tired um, and, you know, if there's some associated breast pain or redness, certainly that might trigger that it's mastitis, but sometimes there's not breast pain. And so again, if a woman is having those symptoms and she's lactating, she should see her care provider early uh, to try to intervene before it becomes an abscess. Okay. And who's the other group of patients besides uh, lactating women who get breast abscesses? Yeah, so non-lactational abscess is usually associated with smoking um, or, you know, other factors such as having prior surgical intervention in the breast. Um, and then diabetics are at increased risk for any infection, um, you know, so not specifically breast abscess. Um, the other factors that might predispose to breast abscess are some squamous metaplasia changes of the nipple. And again, that's, you know, sort of a, a theoretical um, idea, but has been shown on some pathologic specimens. And so women who get chronic periductal mastitis, again, are often smokers. But, you know, what we see is that maybe over time from scarring, the central nipple ducts become a little bit retracted and then easily obstructed. So again, just like any area where we get abscess, bacteria, you know, in an obstructed area of the body or, you know, breaks in the skin kind of contribute to these. Mm -hmm. And if someone uh, presents to you or is sent to you with an abscess or suspected abscess, I imagine in many cases you feel a fluctuant spot and you can proceed from there. But do you, off, do you sometimes have to image or aspirate to get a diagnosis? Yeah, so, you know, most of the time I prefer to image. Some of these abscesses present, you know, as a pointing abscess or it's already uh, draining on its own. And at that point, you know, our job is really to control the infection. But imaging is such an important part of everything we do in breast. And so, it, again, it definitely comes into play either immediately or in a delayed fashion when we treat an abscess. So if an abscess is not already draining, the skin is not thin, then typically we would do an ultrasound either in the office or in breast imaging, um, and then use the ultrasound to guide drainage. Aspiration with a needle is still the preferred treatment for breast abscess uh, whenever possible. So that may even require multiple aspirations, two, three, sometimes even five aspirations, you know, plus antibiotics to get it under control. But if we do that, we decrease the chance of future problems related to that abscess. Mm -hmm. So aspiration is, is, should be the first line of uh, treatment. 
Yeah. Again, unless the abscess presents in such a fashion where it's a little too late to use aspiration or um, I've also had patients where the uh, pus and debris is so thick that you really can't aspirate it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we do have to make a, an incision and drain it. Mm -hmm. And so what uh, are there thoughts about how you um, arrange an incision if you have yeah. to incise and drain that? Yeah, so especially in lactational abscess, there is a risk of milk fistula. And so we try to drain it more toward the periphery uh, of the breast. The other reason for that is to try to preserve breastfeeding. Again, my goal is not to make a mother breastfeed, but to try to keep an abscess from interfering with that breastfeeding relationship if I can. So if we can drain more toward the periphery, then it allows easier latch or pumping you know, again, to continue that breastfeeding. So is it that uh, draining toward the periphery uh, disrupts the ductal system less? Is that? Um, we think so, yeah. You know, and again, any incision um, that you're making in an abscess, if possible, you want to try to avoid causing further disruption of the duct system. Mm -hmm. Do you culture always? I do, yeah. If there's something that we can get out. And, you know, in any infection, we want to use targeted antibiotic therapy if we can. Mm -hmm. has, has MRSA been a problem with um, breast abscesses or has, has it changed the way breast abscesses have been managed? Um, a little bit. So MRSA, you know, again, is prevalent in, in our community and so we see it in all kinds of infections. Um, Staph aureus is the most common organism cultured in breast abscesses. Uh, it's not always MRSA, but, you know, often can be MRSA, uh, particularly in hospital-associated infections. And then it's a little more likely in um, lactational abscess to have Staph aureus uh, mm -hmm. than it is in non-lactational abscess. But, you know, again, we try to think about patient risk factors for MRSA uh, when we're doing our empiric antibiotic coverage. We also see that the MRSA abscesses, just like anywhere else on the body, are a little more uh, sort of virulent. The disease process seems a little more severe. Mm -hmm. You mentioned milk fistula before. Um, how common is that, and, and how do you manage one of those long term? Yeah, so milk fistula is pretty uncommon overall. And again, they can happen even spontaneously, you know, without having drainage of the abscess. If at all possible, again, if a woman is breastfeeding when this occurs and she wants to keep breastfeeding, we try uh, to allow her to do that, even if it means that there's some ongoing drainage, you know, she may have to put a pad there. Uh, we want to watch for, obviously, signs of dehydration in extreme cases. Um, and then in the long term, occasionally fistulas, just like anywhere else, will close on their own. But if a fistula is persistent, then we excise it. Uh, typically, the milk fistula is not very far away from the nipple and areola, so then we excise with a radial incision uh, that fistula and, you know, tying off the associated duct, trying to preserve the rest of the ductal system. Right. Okay. Last thoughts on management of breast abscesses? Uh, I think a, a big um, issue for women is, you know, their access to people who are familiar with ultrasound guided aspiration. And so whenever possible, that really is the, the ideal management to avoid incision and drainage on the breast. And, you know, that requires the knowledge of the providers, not just the breast surgeons, but any provider uh, of that option. I think that's an important thing to pass along because I, I think in my own training, we, we were usually getting these people uh, after failure of aspiration. And therefore, in my head is the idea that, you know, a breast abscess requires incision and drainage. So. Yeah, and, you know, we, we often get skewed by uh, what we see or the extreme cases, particularly if you spend a lot of time on the inpatient wards. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for talking today. I hope to talk to you again soon, Dr. Erdahl. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the Op Report. Help us keep conversations alive on topics in general surgery. Check out more episodes of the Op Report and other on search content here at YouTube. Find us at Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and find our homepage at onsurge.com. Join the conversation and tell us what topics you'd like to hear about and what people you'd like to hear from.